Okay, crafters, here we are, part four in this four-part series about what to do with aluminum cans after you cut the sidewalls out, put them through your Cricut, and emboss them. The last step is we're going to put some color on them. So I've got a little collection of supplies here, and I'm going to show you what I've got. This came from my nail supply kit. If you push this little button on the end, a little claw comes out, and it grabs a cotton ball. And I'm going to use that to dab some of the alcohol ink on these pieces. So let's just set this aside, get these out of our way, out of the tray. I'm working in a tray just to protect my surface, my work surface. I have our adorable little cutouts that have been not just cut on our Cricut but embossed in my We Are Memory Keeper machine with an embossing folder. A little, the plane that came out of here, we just did a little line design on that, also embossed. So we're going to color those up. I have a selection of alcohol inks, and I really had hoped to show you a variety of different paints and inks that would work, but frankly, I wasn't really happy with any other medium than the alcohol inks because I liked the transparency that still came through on the can. I liked that you can go very light or deepen the color by adding more, and I liked that you can mix and match the colors and make very beautiful kind of watercolor paper effects. So I'm going to go with the alcohol inks and we're going to start with my blues because I want to have a nice little blue sky. So we'll use this sailboat blue. These are all the Tim Holtz alcohol inks. And then we're going to use, this might even be more of a purpley color. Uh, I was going to give you the actual indigo. No, indigo blue. So we'll use that on the plane. And I'm just going to get these out of my way for a minute. Okay, so we're going to take our cutout and just put it down here. We just take the alcohol ink. I did nothing to prepare the can. It just didn't need it. And you just come in here and just get some dots on here. And I'm just going to... I was kind of mushing these around, so let me just put, make this a little more straight. These straighten really nicely. Just uh, don't bend them and put a bend into it. You know, you'll start to ruin the design if you do that. But let's go ahead and just drop some of this alcohol ink on here. I'm just going to leave that there open. And then I like to swipe fast so that I spread the ink around and don't just absorb it all into the cotton. I do recommend wearing gloves because you really can't get to all the edges without kind of touching some of the inky parts. All right. If you need to move that cotton around again, gloves come in real handy. So I just want this to have a light flush kind of appearance. As the alcohol ink dries, you'll start to get some really cool lines and staining. If there's something you don't like, however, just go in and add another drop. It kind of re-wets everything. And just go in and do what you want. And you can kind of fix that. So if you had a little splotch or something, you can work it through a second time. So I'm going to set that aside. Oh, and by the way, that's dry. That is not going to go anywhere. If I had my gloves off, it would not already would not rub on my hands. I'm just going to use this darker blue and see what we can do with this little airplane. I actually would like to have something somewhat deep on here. We'll see what happens. Whoops. Okay, no need to change the cotton. I'm just going to a darker blue. I'm going to try and squish it down and compact it a little bit. Boy, I like that. That is very, very deep. You can see that color on there. But what if I wanted it to have some little variations in the color? Well, I could always come back in with that lighter one. Put a little on there. And smudge that through a little bit. And I went and straight up blended it. So I got some dark edges, but some light on the ends. 
don't know if you can see that very well, but that came out really nice. And I have the depth, but I like, I kind of like that I took away some of the depth through here. Might like to have had some of the dark here, but I'm going to move on and just show you a few more. Again, this will only take a few seconds to dry, and then it's very dry. Now, it depends on your application on finishing. I have not tried to finish anything. So if you, again, have some ideas on how to finish these after the fact, let me know because you might have some really great ideas about how to prevent those colors from running if they're, like, these I'm just making up for a greeting card, but say you wanted to make a, a pair of earrings. I, I cut out some circles here that could be earrings and wanted to color those. Well, I might want to put something on top of that and I haven't decided yet or tried a lot of things to see what would work. So maybe it's Mod Podge, maybe I need to use something a little bit stronger, or maybe something made for metal. So I'll play with that idea. Again, I'd love your feedback. Put them in the comments and let me know what you did with this project. I would love also to see pictures, so send them on over. Let's see what you did. So I have another cute little set here. I have just a big striped panel and on top of that I wanted to lay a little outline of the US but I put flowers all over it because I just had a vacation where I got to spend some time in Florida at a friend's home so I thought I'd send a little thank you card and I also had this little heart that was a cutout from a different piece and I thought, how cute would it be to color the base, color the map something different, and then color the little heart a third color and put that little heart right here on Florida. So I think that's going to be really adorable. And then on the inside, I can, of course, write a nice little thank you note. So I wanted something kind of lighter on the back. I think I'll go with, I was thinking kind of pinks and greens and Florida colors, maybe a teal for the heart so it can get deep. So I have watermelon and I have citrus. I think I'm going to do watermelon for the back. I'm going to take these out of my tray. And let's get a clean piece of cotton. Now, the other thing I was going to play with here, in addition to cotton, I have these. They're called uh, two by twos. They're used by estheticians. And I thought I wanted to try and see what that would do too. I'm just going to fold that up, use my little claw and grab it, and just see if that is effective and maybe absorbs a little less than the cotton. So we'll play with this one and see. Here we go again, just being curious, right? So go ahead and just drop some of that color on. It's kind of a bigger piece. So I haven't played with this enough yet to know if I should drop that much at once or if it's gonna start drying out on me. And if it does dry out on me, that could be problematic. It didn't seem to though. I think as long as they stay sort of in their piles, they don't seem to. And I just want a kind of nice flat coat on all of this. Alright, that went through nicely. And then I just want to keep the, the lines going here. Oh, kind of hold that down and just you can work it as long as you can. I want just some very, ugh, get, let's get these out of here. Some slight variations in those lines and I think that's going to come out nicely. So that looks great. Right where I was holding it, I'm just going to swipe that edge a little bit also. There, just a very washed color. So we'll set that aside, let that dry. Now we're going to take our little U.S. outline. I'm going to pop that off because I don't need that color, but I could use it again for a different color, so I'm just going to leave it in the tray. Looks like somebody just had surgery, doesn't it? All right, so I'm just folding that down into about an eighth of the size, and that seems to grab it really well. I think I liked this better than the cotton. It just pushed everything around a little better. Okay, so this citrus is just a nice light yellowy green. I think it'll pop off of that map. Oop, that, uh, there's probably more ink than I needed. It kind of splashed out of there. This is a beautiful, nice kind of subtle color. There we 
go. It's almost a little too subtle. I think I'm going to try and maybe add to that. I've got just a little bit. I have a couple of options. I have Stream and I have, where's the color here? Mermaid. Oh, now Mermaid sounds like Florida. Let's go ahead and add just a couple drops of this Mermaid and just do a little bit of that watercolor effect. Whoop, there's an unintentional drop. Okay, I'm just going to use that little green pad. Oh, that's really fun. Swirl around. Try not to overdo it and take away too much of your green, but that is how well those colors will blend. So I think that's going to be really nice and that's going to sit right on top of here and look, this is dry. None of, none of that's coming off. So I pretty much can start working with this right, right away and start making a little card. So I think I want that little heart to pop really well. So my goal is going to be to make it a nice dark color. So I think I'll go back to that indigo because I think if I go any lighter than that, it's probably not going to show up. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab that blue. I'll use the cotton. So I'm really going to just blob it on there and try and load it up. And it's such a small little bit. It's right here, if you can see that on, on this starting to be very colored paper towel. Just put one drop right on the middle there. So even with a nice dark color, that shine still comes through on the metal. It's got a very nice metallic look. So that'll be adorable on that card. Just uh, put that little heart right on top of Florida. So last but not least, I'm going to do one more and just use multiple colors again, just to show you all of that blending. So this says best wishes, and I just thought something it could go on the front of a card. And I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of a rainbow of color here. So, now I'm noticing here because I have so many edges that this cotton kind of grabs. I think I'm ultimately probably going to ditch the cotton and just use these because it's just such a small little bit and it pushes everything around so nicely. I wonder if I could make it even smaller. Let's try it and see, shall we? Oh yeah, look at that. It makes a nice little, almost a tight little pen tip. So there's some turquoise or a mermaid. There's some citrus. Let's add a little bit of this color. It is Wild Plum. A little bit of cotton off of there. Now, as you can see here, I left that part really kind of dark and I went ahead and just washed out the edges. I really like that effect. We'll see if it uh, comes out nice when we do it that way. We'll find out soon. Grab this little corner, kind of paint that down. Okay, we're going to add some of that watermelon color. So you can see that you can just have all kinds of fun. Just, I'm not really mixing the colors, just bringing them up and overlapping just a little bit. And because they're the same type of medium, it just seems to work really well.
Give it a little bend, just bend it back. And that's looking really great. And I'm going to add something a little dark now. I have some brown I want to add into this. You can see that brown is, starts out looking very dark, but it actually kind of fades off. There we go. And last but not least, a little bit of that blue. Just into a couple little spots. Whoops. Not quite where I wanted it, but okay. All right, I think you get the general idea. So this is just going to look stunning on a card. I don't really need a whole lot more than this. I can cut out some backing. Oh, I just noticed I have one little bit here. It didn't pop out. I'll have to pop that out, <laughs> but that's okay. So uh, this is going to look really, I think, fantastic on a card. And um, if you have anything, I just noticed like right in this little S where it looks a little mushy and not great, I'm just going to get a little extra ink, grab one of my colors, and then just pop in a little bit more of the ink so wet it basically with the ink and then just swirl it a little bit more and just blend that in so bottom line these inks were fun they were fun they were blendy they dried really quickly i am not a hundred percent sure of the longevity so uh, i'll I'll try and put notes in the comments when I learn more about that. And if you know more about that, just let me know. I just think that the possibilities with these aluminum soda cans are endless. You can do so many fun things with them to make accents, to make jewelry, to make signs. They definitely make beautiful letters and numbers. So I think that you have a whole world of opportunity and if you just go through these four videos, hopefully I've given you enough tips to get you started. And share back. If you learn something else, please tell me. I'd love to hear it. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy this. Okay, I've finished everything, and I thought I'd just take a moment to show you the collection. So here we are. I didn't put this one onto a card yet. The rest are finished. <laughs>